Welcome to the fourth part of Earth in Upheaval. In this episode, we will focus on the chapter called Sea and Land Changes Places. In this chapter, Velikovsky relies entirely on one source, that of Georges Cuvier's essay on the theory of the Earth. Cuvier was the most renowned naturalist of his time. He was the founder of vertebrae paleontology, the science of extinct animals. Cuvier wrote this works as an introductory essay to his four-volume series, Research on the Fossilized Bones of Quadrupeds. Here he was attempting to reconstruct extinct species from the fossilized remains. He had studied the strata and fossils across Europe, and he had seen that although there were layers that were abundant with life, there were equally strata that seemed to be totally devoid of life. He also saw that there was clear evidence that land that had once supported life at other stages had been underwater. He saw that these layers appeared in repeating patterns and that the changes appeared to be sudden and dramatic, not slow and gradual. Cuvier was left in no doubt that the raising up and overturning of the old strata have been reduced to the state which we now see them, by action of sudden and violent causes, and even the force of the motions excited in the mass of water is still attestable by the heaps of debris and round pebbles which are in many places interposed between the solid state. He viewed that these had been caused by catastrophic events. He was equally surprised to find deep strata that indicated a total lack of life, both on land and in the sea. Cuvier reviewed many of the theories on the formation of Earth, but was not able to come to any conclusions regarding the origin of these catastrophes. Cuvier's preliminary discourse came to be regarded as one of the first publications outlining the theory of catastrophism, and therefore it is no surprise that Velikovsky devoted an entire chapter to his work. Cuvier later on in his document speculated that the most recent of these catastrophes were quite recent. General conclusion relative to the period of the last revolution. I agree that if anything in geology be established, it is that the surface of our globe has undergone a great and sudden revolution, the date of which cannot be referred to a much earlier period than five or six thousand years ago, that this revolution overwhelmed and caused to disappear the countries which were previously inhabited by man, and the species of animals now best known, that, on the other hand, it lay dry the bottom of the sea and formed of it the countries which at present day are inhabited, that it is since the occurrence of this revolution that the small number of individuals dispersed by it have been spread and propagated over the newly exposed land, and consequently that it is since this epoch only that human society has assumed a progressive march, that they have formed establishments, raised monuments, collected natural facts, and invented scientific systems. But the countries which are at present inhabited, and which the last revolution lay dry, had already been previously inhabited, if not by men, at least by land animals, and therefore one preceding revolution at least had put them under water. And if we may judge by the different orders of animals, the remains of which are observed in them, they had perhaps been subject to two or three eruptions of the sea. Now the counter-argument given by uniformitarians is that the strata that Cuvier studied spans hundreds of millions of years, not thousands. These long stretches of time would therefore allow for the evolution of new species, the extinction of others, and the transformation of the land into sea and sea into land, thereby not requiring a catastrophe. Cuvier saw that the evidence he had uncovered was one of only many catastrophes that had befallen the earth. He saw the evidence of the frozen carcasses of mammoths as proof that the latest catastrophe occurred very suddenly and violently, and pointing out, if they had not been frozen as soon as killed, they would have been decomposed by putrefaction. And now, on the other hand, this eternal frost could not have previously occupied the places in which they have been seized by, 
for they could not have lived in such a temperature. It was, therefore, at one and the same moment that these animals were destroyed, and that the country which they inhabited became covered with ice. This event has been sudden, instantaneous, without any gradation. His view was that the fossil record showed that animals and plant species are destroyed time and again by deluges and other natural cataclysms, and that new species evolve only after this. One of the sharpest critics of Cuvier's theory was Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, who was convinced that all living things had originated from simple organisms, and were therefore related to each other. The various species were merely the result of different environmental conditions. Intensive use of certain organs had led to their strengthening and enlargement, and the opposite would cause it to diminish. These properties were then passed on to their offspring. Darwin, on the other hand, viewed evolution through natural selection and was firmly in the uniformist camp, seeing this process being slow and gradual. We are all familiar with Darwin's work. Cuvier has nearly been forgotten. Many of his papers have still not been translated into English. And in studies of professional paleontology, Cuvier is routinely slighted, even though he is acknowledged to be the founder of this discipline. What might not be so obvious to an outsider is that Darwin's work is inconceivable without Cuvier's discoveries. Darwin's theory of extinction was almost the opposite to Cuvier's, where he saw that the extinctions were caused by the failure of the species and not a physical cause. Darwin's view prevailed and Cuvier was discredited and for more than a century his views were ignored. More recent discoveries have tended to support Cuvier's theories, which have been torn apart in the past. It appears that regular cataclysmic events do indeed happen and do indeed shape evolution. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.